everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Points of Articulation. My name's Dave, and before I get to the meat and potatoes of this review, I want you guys to pick my next review. Any NECA Aliens figure you could think of and you want me to look at, write in the comments below, or go onto my YouTube's Facebook page and let me know there. Any figure you want. Uh, we have the Alien, Aliens, Alien 3, Alien Isolation, AVP, the Kenner ones, and even Prometheus. Three exceptions. I do not have the 1979 Concept Translucent Xenomorph. Um, I will not review the Queen or the Power Loader yet. I'm going to save them for another day and time altogether. So anyway, today we are looking at the NECA Prometheus Series 2 Deacon. Now, the Deacon is not the perfect organism that we know as the Xenomorph. But basically, a lot of people thought this was what would lead to the Xenomorph. Not true. Xenomorphs and the space jockeys, they were all fossilized like that for 2,000 years. So whatever happened, happened 2,000 years ago. And the alien existed back then. This is a splinter off of the DNA chain, if you will. So where did Deacon come from? The Deacon came from David playing with the black goo, which infected Dr. Holloway, who had sex with Shaw. Shaw gave birth to the Trilobite, and the Trilobite impregnated the Engineer, and the Engineer gave birth to the Deacon. Very confusing, I know, but it's pretty awesome. Great design here, and they call it the Deacon because it looks like the, sort of like a Pope hat. You know, it's a triangle. So very cool. A lot of religious motifs and ideas in Prometheus, and I hope in Covenant. I like that. Now, a little fact, the jaw on this is not an inner jaw like the Xenomorph we know, but it's based on the goblin shark's mouth, and it's a really creepy fish. Crazy, the whole jaw just extends and comes out. Very nasty. So, anywho, back to the figure. This figure sits just like this, and it's about six inches, but when it's standing, which I you can't stand it by itself, you need some sort of stand... It's uh, about seven and a quarter inches tall, so it's a nice sized figure. I keep it in this pose because the articulation is not too good on this figure. But this is how it looked in the film when it crawled out of the engineer at the end. This is what it did. It just sat up and yelled. And I love that. I love this design. So we do have a lot to talk about. NECA did a great job with the mold. The paint's good. The articulation is meh. But we'll talk about it and also it comes with some cool accessories. An engineer head, and two hammerpeeds, those snake-like worm creatures that were affected by the black goo. So, let's just get started. And here we have the sculpt of the Deacon. Very unique, very interesting. Now, unlike the original Xenomorphs that were more biomechanical, and had that sort of, I guess you could say, uh, insect-like exoskeleton, the armor, this creature is more organic. It's uh, set of the sections it has muscle tone and you can see it right here on the neck very much like a human and a lot of people say that the creature itself is very feminine and I could see a lot of that the angles and the body of it the collarbone it has a lot of qualities like that and I guess since it comes from the trilobite and the trilobite is from Shaw. You know, it has a lot of female DNA and this and that. So I could see where it's coming from, and I like that. It's very unique. And like I mentioned, it is organic, so we have a lot of stretching of skin, a lot of textures. We got some dimple thins going on here. Very cool. Now, this head, you could have it so the mouth is open like this, or this drops down. We can see some great details here. Or it can open like so, just like that iconic movie scene. Very interesting. We have the inside of the mouth. Creepy. And then the side of the head. And just look at all the details here. Just amazing. Let me shut this. Creepy looking, right? Then we have our neck. Let me get the back of that. Tilt the head down. And there's nothing on the bottom of the head. just flat. On the back we have our shoulder blades. All these muscles. Just amazing. The spine going down. Really cool. Now we have our deacon butt. Sort of a tail right there. It doesn't really 
come out much, but there is some sort of tailbone. Then we have our hips going around the sides to the front. And then here we have our stomach, which is very elongated. The muscle, anyway. Then it comes up to the nice rib cage here. The neck. Very cool. I like this. Now for the arms. Again, very organic. You can see some muscles there. And then to the hands, we have some nails that are painted blue. And the bottom of that hand, just pretty cool. Back of the arm, interesting. Now for the legs, just like the clone Xenomorphs from Alien Resurrection, this has a lot of that muscle, but it's much more streamlined. It's much more elegant looking. We can see some of the muzzles are down this way, some are underneath. Just really cool. Then underneath we have some muscles. And the black paint really helps it out. So you can see all that. And we have our calves, again with the muscle. Really cool. And the same for the front. We got our kneecaps as well. Then on the bottom we have our feet. And you can see some nice toes there. Some great textures. Pretty awesome. And underneath we have pick holes for the stand. And the bottoms of the toes. So that does it for the sculpt. So now let's take a look at the paint. Now this will be the quickest look at the paint I've ever done in my life on this channel. And all we have is a nice shade of blue from head all the way down to the toes. Maybe a little tint of green in there. It's a very cool color. Now on top of that, we have some black for the engineer blood, a black wash over the whole thing to bring out all these great details of the muscles and rib cage and arms and fingers and details. Awesome job with the wash. Now for the mouth, we have pink for the interior and then tan for the teeth and there is also a light wash on the teeth and in the mouth as well to help those details come out. And that's about it. So now that I looked at the sculpt and paint, let's take a look at the articulation. For articulation, the Deacon has a ball joint in his head, so it can rotate, it can go back and forward, side to side. You get some nice movement here. Now for his jaw, what you do is, mine was a little stiff, but you grab it and pull it down a little bit, and you'll see these uh, stretch marks, sort of like the Xenomorph come out. You can see him right there, and better on this side, and then you can open his mouth like so. So you could shut that like so, and it likes to drop, but sometimes it gets stuck in there like so. Now here's the problem point, the shoulders. For some reason, they did the articulation backwards. Usually you put the detail on the chest section, so that way the arms can move. What they did was they put the detail around the joint. So you could get the arm to go that high and that low, but and rotate that much. So you you can't even tell. You know, it's it's very minute. And they did the same thing with the forearm here. You have all the detail here and the peg is backwards. So it could bend, but it, it can't rotate. The only way it's rotating is through the shoulder, which is hardly anything. It's nil. But the forearm can rotate a little bit. It's hindered by the uh, the skin, I guess, right there. And then for the arm, it's two ball joints, and one snaps into the forearm, and one snaps into the hand. And that's good. That that one's pretty solid. The hand can rotate and go in any direction you want. So that's not too bad. Now for the waist, it can move a little bit forward, uh, a little bit back. Could rotate a little bit. I don't want to break it. And that's it. Now for the legs, two ball joints, so they can basically like swivel, rotate, uh, they can move up a little bit. Now for the knee, it has a little rotation, and then it can bend with one hinge. So that's basically it. And then for this little foot section, we have ball joints. Mine are stiff as hell, so I'm not going to break it. This one can uh, move a little bit, a little bit left to right, up and down.
but not by much. I looked at the scope, the paint, and the articulation, so now let's take a look at the accessories. Now the first accessory up are the hammer peds. Now this creature is the result of those little tiny worms getting in contact with the black goo, the accelerant, and this is what they turned into. Now at first you can see that they don't really look too threatening. You can see there's the folded up head and a great looking uh, sculpt on this thing. Nice details there, very glossy. And the paint for these is like a tannish pink and a brown wash, very glossy, a little bit of yellow as well. Not too much though. And there is a bendy wire inside of it, so you can bend like so and in any shape you want. They're very cool. But, when it goes to attack, or is threatened, then the head opens up, and that little part right here would open up and there's a mouth in there. But very interesting. Almost like a cobra. Very neat. And same details for the most part. Little tail there. And this is also a bendy wire. So you get these in some great poses. Very cool, right? Also, besides the two hammerpeds, you get an engineer head, or a space jockey, or engineer helmet, I guess you could say. Very nice. We have our eyes, the breathing hose, whatever you want to call that, and just look at all the detail on here. Amazing. And we have our underneath, where the head got chopped off. So, now to paint for this, I would say it's a nice charcoal color, glossy black for the eyes. And then all of it is highlighted by this orange color. And I'm happy with it. I think it came out good. And the best part of it is, if you lift here, there is an engineer head in there. And that is very much detailed. Looks pretty damn good. Very accurate to the film. And the eyes are black. A little gray in there where the white would be. The teeth are a nice tan, very glossy, black inside as well. And then for the skin, it is a bluish color, like a duck egg blue. And that's coated with a darker gray color, almost uh, like a light charcoal. Very nice. All the details are there. Perfect. And it just slides on like so. And it's pretty good, doesn't fall out. And lastly, we get a stand here. Looks like high heels almost. And it has the copyright crap on the bottom and two pegs. Very nice, and I'll show you how to put that on the creature right now. Okay, to get the creature on the stand, you're going to want to bend the legs up. And it just slides on like so. And you're good to go. To compare it to Deacon, I have it next to the original Xenomorph. You can see the size difference here. Now this black alien came with the Alien vs. Predator Kenner 2-pack, which came out a couple months ago. It is a repack, actually, with the brand new articulation, so it's worth your money. But damn, great figures. And that does it for my review today of the NECA Prometheus Series 2 Deacon. Now what are the good points of this? It's a very interesting and unique sculpt, the paint is pretty good, and the accessories are great. Now the only weak point I could find on this figure would be the articulation. Now it can be put into some poses, but not many because of the arm problems. The legs are okay though. Now I would recommend this for any fan of the Alien franchise as well as Prometheus. Now if you're looking to buy this, I would strongly suggest eBay or other sellers. I went on Amazon today, it's the 24th of April, and this figure was 140 something dollars on Amazon. Is it worth that much? Well, that's up to you. I personally wouldn't pay that much for something like this, but that's what it is now. So I would strongly suggest shopping around if you really want this figure. And besides that, just uh, two little questions. Do you think we will see the Deacon in Alien Covenant? And if so, how? And also, in that one comic, uh, Fire and Stone, they suggest or allude to that this creature goes into the black goo and turns into that big mountain. And I want to know, what are your thoughts on that? 
Like, do you think that's a cool end to this creature? Or would you like to see something better? And that's all I have to say about this beautiful piece. So thank you for joining me. If you like this review, hit that like button. Or click the subscribe button for new reviews every Thursday. And remember, you guys get to pick my next review. So let me know in the comments below what figure you guys want to see. So thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.